did an excellent job setting this series up, challenging us to deny ourselves. I love what she said. We need to put some things down so our hands are free to pick up what God has called us to pick up. And that is our cross. Matthew 16, 24 says, if we want to be his followers, we must first deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. It is interesting to me that Jesus chooses the cross to represent his kingdom. A brand is a name, term, or symbol that conveys to consumers its identity, the identity of the company, product, or individual. The Amazon logo is a commitment to the consumer and customer all-inclusive shopping experience. That's why we see that arrow going from the A to Z. You can get anything on Amazon from sneakers to doorknobs to housing equipment, cars, stuff for your lawn. It's an all-inclusive shopping experience. The Google logo before color scheme of the Google logo actually represents its ambition to be innovative. It's a brand that wants you to know that it's going to bring you products that are innovative and not to be expected. The Walt Disney logo is designed to tie in the Disney aesthetic of family fun and fantasy. I am sure you knew Fortune 500 companies have a logo. I'm not sure if you knew the kingdom has one. And when Jesus decided that the kingdom needed something for its potential consumers of the product of grace through faith, he chose the cross. Jesus chose the cross, I believe, because when he told his disciples, don't miss it, that one day I am going to have to suffer. One day I'm going to have to embrace pain. One day I'm going to have challenges on my walk to purpose and destiny. I'm going to die, and in three days, I'm going to rise again. When he was sharing his path to purpose with his team, Peter, as he often does, stuck his foot in his mouth. And he said, you're not going to have to suffer. He said, far be it. He said, don't, don't, don't think that you're going to have to embrace a season of suffering to get to where you are called and created to be. Th this won't happen to you. I only know of two instances in scripture where it's recorded that Jesus addresses Satan directly. One instance is in the wilderness this story is told twice in the Gospels. And Jesus is shown the kingdoms of the world. And Satan says to Jesus, I will give you everything you see. I will give you the power, the prominence, the prestige. You, you can rule everything you see in this world if you'll just bow to me. Satan tempts the Savior with a shortcut. If you will just do what's wrong, you can get what's right. If you will worship me, you don't have to go through any cross. And sometimes that's a telltale sign 
that is Satan speaking versus the spirit of God speaking because Satan always tempts you with the shortcut. And after Jesus tells him that God says worship him alone, the Bible says that Satan is going to come back at a more opportune time. I believe that more opportune time is what we're reading about in Matthew 16. Because this is the only other time in scripture we see Jesus address Satan directly. So Matthew records for us that Jesus is being tempted again to circumvent the cross. But Satan doesn't come at him directly this time. He comes at him through a friend. He's thinking that if he can come through Peter, he can get Jesus not to pick up his pain. I'm not going to come at you directly this time. I'm going to come at you through a friend. And Satan speaks through Peter something that he hopes Jesus wants to hear. That Jesus You don't have to suffer. Jesus, you don't have to go through this pain. Jesus, you can rule. Jesus, uh, you, you, you can get to the place that God has called you to without the crucifixion. You don't have to carry the cross. I don't think it's a coincidence that both times the devil makes himself the most evident in Jesus' path to purpose, that both times his message is the same. Don't suffer. I'm wondering if the message isn't the same today as it was in the days of antiquity. I believe the devil's voice is the loudest in our life when it involves pain we don't want to pick up. Oh, y'all going to be quiet this morning. It's all good. It's going to get worse. The closer we get to our cross, the louder the devil gets. The closer you get to that place of pain, the louder the voice of the enemy gets. The, 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 the more difficult the destiny seems, the more the devil's going to convince you it's not worth it. The business isn't worth it. Why are you continuing to be the first one in the office and the last one to leave? The marriage isn't worth it. It's not God's will. It'd be easier if I just started over from scratch. The ministry isn't making a difference. You study the Hebrew and the Greek and folk won't even say Amen. <laughs> You, you, the, the, the closer you get to the pain, the louder. The harder it gets, the more he yells, quit. Put it down. Compromise your character. Ignore your integrity. Let's be honest, suffering can make you feel schizophrenic. Because you begin to hear voices that you've never heard before. God isn't going to make it work. God has brought you to a place and he's going to leave you there. It's not worth embracing the cross. Try to escape it by any means necessary. It's antithetical to the human condition to want to carry the cross the cross represents suffering the cross represents Jesus greatest place of pain and we love to celebrate the cross that Christ was on but he reminds his disciples that you get one too Matthew 16, 23 says, but you are not setting your mind on the things of God, 
but on the things of man. He tells Peter, this is key. He says, Peter, when you think you can develop your character without a cross, you not thinking like the holy, you thinking like a human. Peter, if you think that I can, can get to where God has called and created me to be without the pain, then you are not thinking like the holy, you are thinking like a human. Peter, if you think you can get married and not have trials and tribulations, you are thinking like the human, you are not thinking like the holy. If you think you can raise children that are always going to obey and always wake up making their bed and always do the right thing, you are thinking like a human, you're not thinking like a holy. If you think you can start a multi-million dollar business and never have days where it looks like you not gonna make payroll you are thinking like a human and not thinking like the holy God understands that you can't get to destiny you can't be divine without developing your character and it takes suffering to develop character it takes embracing a cross to be a disciple that's why he said if you want to be like me Don't try to take a shortcut. You, Peter, I want you to understand you and your feelings. You're not thinking like God thinks when you try to take the easy route. Humans try to escape suffering but when you holy you try to embrace it you don't think like God if you think you can get gain without pain God, God wouldn't click on an ad that says you can lose 50 pounds in a month sitting on the couch God wouldn't start a business where, where the promise is you can get rich overnight on the beach with a laptop Why? Because God knows that success comes through suffering. Truth be told, let's just keep it real. That the flesh wants comfort. The flesh wants physical ease. The, the flesh wants distance from distress. Flesh wants happiness with no hurting. Flesh wants peace and no pain. Flesh wants, want, wants comfort. Do you remember in Luke twenty-two fifty-four 54, when they arrested Jesus and it said that Peter followed at a distance? Somebody remembers that. That's so good. You, 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 you missed it. Why is Peter following at a distance? Because the high priest just entered the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest Jesus and take him to what potentially would be his greatest time of pain. And during Jesus' greatest time of pain, Peter decides that he wants to follow not close to Jesus, not next to Jesus, not with Jesus. He wants to follow now at a distance. I got a problem with that because your friends should be with you when you're in pain. The fr your friends should be with you in the season of suffering. The people that you fed. He was there for the free cookouts. And when Jesus was turning loaves of bread and fish to, in, in, into a cookout that would feed the multi-thousands of people. He was with Jesus when Jesus would bring sight to the blind. He was with Jesus when he was giving strength to the lame men so that they could walk. He was with Jesus when he hailed the woman of the issue of blood. So you want my meals and you work my miracles, but you don't want to be with me in the mess. And we got to be disciples that don't get distance from the pain we got to be people who want to be where Jesus is Jesus was in the pain and Peter is back here 
Jesus is about to embrace his cross and Peter's like, nah, not today. He was following at a distance. I realize I'm not talking about Peter anymore. How close are you to Jesus when it's time to suffer? Do we forget who we are? Do we forget our training? Do we forget what we were preached? Do we forget how we were raised? Do we forget what we read? Do we forget what we studied? Do we forget what we prayed for? Some of us don't realize that when we pray, pain shows up. Because God is trying to give you the character that you're going to need to handle the level he's about to put you on. He's saying, don't travel at a distance. Sometimes we choose happiness over holiness. Comfort over crucifixion, sin over sanctification, pleasure over purification. It, it's sometimes we choose fun over the fire, but, but it's the fire that purifies. It's the fire that proves your faith. It's the, pride, it's the fire that begins to remove sin from our life. It's the fire that gives us integrity. Can anybody testify? It was actually the fire that gave me the faith that I stand on today. It was the fire that developed me. It was the fire that taught me how to focus on Jesus. It was the fire that taught me that in, in my weakness, he is made strong. It was the fire that told me that God will provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. It was the fire that told me he would never leave or forsake me. It's the fire. Peter, you want the miracles, but you're trying to circumvent the mess. Peter, you want the purpose and promises and prosperity of God, but you don't want the pain. Peter would argue with the other disciples about who would be the greatest. You, 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 you will be all up in Jesus' face fighting for position, but when it's time to suffer, you travel at a distance? Nobody except John was with him when he was suffering. The disciples scattered like roaches with the lights on. Oh, y'all from Evans and... <laughs> And Martinez, I know you don't have you don't have those problems. <laughs> well, sometimes if you have roaches, when the lights come on, they <laughs> thought I was somewhere else. I'm sorry. I... We want to rule and reign with Christ but here's the real question that determines whether we're disciples or not are we willing to suffer with him I think God is trying to develop our maturity But because it's a lack of maturity that causes us to try to skip suffering. I told the young people at Collide on Friday that to be who God called and created us to be, we've got to be willing to embrace suffering. We've got to be willing to choose the Christ over the crowd. 
We've got to be willing to embrace purpose over popularity. We, we, we have to be willing to go through the fire to get to the future that God has. He's called us to be the light of the world, a city on a hill that can't be hidden. And if you're going to be the light, you can't worry about being liked. If you want to be the light, you can't worry about how, how things are going to feel all the time. If you want to be the light, you can't be driven and, and guided by emotion. If you want to be the light, that sometimes you got to endure suffering. If you want to be an example to the world, sometimes you got to go things differently and show them that there is a God who won't leave or forsake you. If you want to be an example to the community, you got to be able to stand on your faith and no matter what comes at you, you got to be able to believe that God is going to work it out for your good, that there's a glory that's coming from what you're going through. It's a maturity issue. If I was to invite a two-year-old child on the stage and ask them what would they prefer, a piece of their favorite candy or a three-carat VVS D-color princess cut diamond, what do you think they would choose? The candy. Because immaturity always causes you to choose what's sweet over what's valuable. Saints usually, unfortunately, choose that thing which is sweet versus that thing that's valuable. We often choose to get out of the relationship when God is saying, no, I want you to stay because the character you're going to get is more valuable. You, you, we're running from the challenge. The, 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 the ridicule that we would receive for standing up for Christ is more valuable than the sweetness of being in a crowd that you're not meant to fit in. Some of us, are. we, we got to understand that if we really want what God has for us, we have to choose that thing that hurts and even though it hurts it's more valuable than that thing that may feel good momentarily that thing that may be sweet but let me help you it's only sweet for a season the Bible says that that the pleasure of sin is fleeting yes yeah, sin has a pleasure or nobody would do it but it's fleeting it, it's not going to last and I love how God works because God will give you pain up front short term and pleasure down the end long term but the devil gives you pleasure up front short term and pain long term I don't know about you but I'll choose the cross up front I'll choose the pain up front because the pain is only for a season yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because thou art with me your rod and your staff they comfort me I like what Paul says in Philippians Paul shares his testimony. This is gold. He says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Oh, y'all going to get quiet? That's a good. I'm going to teach y'all how to shout on substance. That is good right there. I want to know Christ. I'm not trying to follow at a distance. As a matter of fact, I want to feel what Christ felt. I want to share in his rejection sometimes. I want to share in his suffering sometimes. I want to go through the pain that he went through. I want to live my life for others versus myself. I want to give more than I receive. I want to share more and be less self-centered. He's saying, I want to know the the the, the, the suffering and, and share in his death. I want to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Most of us want to experience the miracle, but let me help you. You don't get raised from the dead unless you're willing to die. If you really want to know the power of God, you got to really be willing to embrace some pain. You don't get the miracles without embracing the mess. Paul said, I understand how this works. If I want the power, I got to go through something. What the devil was trying to talk Jesus out of was his greatest victory. 
Oh, that's so good. Let me, let me, let me. I'm about, I'm about to lose it. I'll be here for another hour. Here it is. I have a question. What if our perspective of sacrifice and death to ourselves was different? I believe that is what causes us to clam up and causes us to want to quit and throw in the towel because we have the wrong perspective of pain. Paul, again, in 2 Corinthians 1, says, Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Who we If you're not a Christian, I'm glad you're here. But this isn't for you. This is for those who have decided they want to be disciples. If you're not a Christian, you can ignore this right here. This, this is for those who have said, I want to be conformed into his image. If you want to be conformed into his image, 2 Corinthians 1 9 is for you. Paul says, let me share with you how I felt during a season of suffering. We felt we had received the sentence of death. Some of us believe that what we're going through is a sentence. But it's only a season. <laughs> That's so good. It, it, it's not a sentence. It's a season. Jesus isn't going to leave you there. Jesus is not going to let you die. Jesus is not going to let you down. It is through faith we are saved. He's, he's saying, I thought that this was the end for me. I had written my obituary. I was ready to die. But he said, I realized that this wasn't a sentence. It was only a season. Why was it only a season, Paul? Because I realized that it was to make me rely not on myself but on God who raises the dead I realized that this was not a sentence of death it was only a season of development I realized that God did not bring me here to leave me here I realized that God only made me weak so he could show me his strength I only realized that God took some folk out my life so I could see he would never leave or forsake me I realized that God allowed me to go through some pain so he would give me the character I would need for the purpose he was calling me to is there anybody besides myself that is glad that what I'm going through it is not a season it is only a sentence God says don't you try to circumvent the cross because if you circumvent the pain you circumventing your purpose don't try to escape it embrace it because what you're going to get is more valuable. What you're going to get is a faith you can stand on. What you're going to get is a testimony that others will, 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 that will increase the faith of others. What you're going to get is a light that's going to burn brighter. What you're going to get is the strength that you'll need to truly change your family. What you're going to get is a testimony that will truly help change the office that you walk into every day. What you're going to get is a faith that's going to remove all doubt on who Jesus Christ really is. A faith that's going to allow you to stand up in the midst of the crowd and hold on to your character. A faith that's going to allow you to walk into that school and say, no, not today. I'm not doing that because I've value my integrity and my testimony what you're going to get is going to be more valuable than what you get trying to choose something sweet dear heavenly father we're choosing you today We all 
can do a bit of a better job embracing our cross including the man with the microphone if we want to be disciples how we want to be disciples so will you give us the strength will you give us the faith will you give us the perspective that we need to embrace what we must embrace during our season of suffering so that faith is developed and we can truly follow you but not at a distance will you help us to be more like you will you help us to have the same testimony as Paul where he says I want to share in the suffering I don't want it just the miracles I don't want j- j- just the fun and, 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 and the things that make me feel good and, 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 and the comfort and the, the, the happiness God give us a desire for holiness give us a desire and increase our hunger and thirst for righteousness conform us into your image